Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. Hustle out, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. It's been about two years since I've tested the last Alpine amplifier here on my channel, the MRV M500, a 500 watt monoblock amp. This got me thinking, you know, we'd spend a lot of time testing amplifiers. There are thousands of watts required, extra electrical systems and all that stuff. But you know, the average person just wants to be able to go shopping, drive their normal car, have a decent system in it. And not worry about all these extra electrical upgrades. I mean, we got kids that need to ride in the car with us. We have groceries. We have all kind of stuff. And we don't always have a whole lot of room for extra speakers, subwoofers, amplifiers, all that stuff. There's a lot of people out there just want the basics. And this is proven via a CE Outlook article, the top five amplifiers for the year 2022. And it shows the Alpine is number three on this list and you might say well, what is this retail tracking service by NPD and according to their website it uses over 600,000 retail locations plus e-commerce and mobile platforms measures what customers are buying we don't have all the details to say where they're purchasing from but most likely it's places like Crutchfield, Car Toys, and Best Buy. Since the Alpine was number three on the list I decided to pick up the SA60M here shown on their website. The S series is kind of their budget line. This is a 600 watt monoblock, which replaces the previous 500 watt monoblock. This amp's available virtually everywhere for around $220. That's their retail price as well. I'll leave links in the video description. I actually picked mine up from Crutchfield. The outlet saved about 10 bucks, but I'll leave you links in the video description to Amazon, which will be affiliate links so you can help out my channel. Let's open up this one and check it out. You can see here, it doesn't look like it's ever been opened before. There are the mounting screws to mount the amplifier. Here's a verification certificate, 851 actual watts. We're going to talk about that later. Comes with several different documents, including the warranty, the manual, an extra sheet here that talks about what kind of power wire you need. So yeah, let's unwrap it from the plastic and talk a little bit about it. First thing I'll notice is the finish, which is this matte black finish, kind of a hammered finish. Reminds you of old school amps. Here on one side of the amp, you can see RCA input and output as well as input level low or high. Also we have gain control, a low pass filter from 400 down to 50 Hertz. That is 24 dB per octave, which is nice. A base EQ from zero to 12 dB, but it is 50 Hertz. what you say about that kicker? We tune our enclosures to right about 40 Hertz and everything below that is pretty much a waste of information. So we eliminate it. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. There's also a connection for the remote base control via telephone style connector. You can pick that up as an extra for 30 bucks. Did not include with the amp, but they did drop the price $30. So there is that for those who don't need it, don't have to pay for it. Those who want it, yep, yeah, just 30 extra bucks. On the opposite side of the amp, we do have the connections for the speaker as well as the power and ground, including eight gauge for the single speaker output. There is no multiple speaker outputs. This is a monoblock amp. 230 amp ATC style fuses, battery remote and ground, the battery and ground terminals except up to four gauge power wire. It's a bit of an optical illusion, but the amp is actually square, 8.1 inches wide and long, 2.4 inches for the height, millimeter equivalent is there as well. This amp is very compact, will fit under most vehicle seats. You can see here the comparison to the old school Rockford Fosgate Punch 30, which was about a 60 watt amp compared to 600 plus watt amplifier here from Alpine. As far as ratings go, four ohms is rated 330 watts, two ohms, 600 watts, not rated for under two ohms. So let's uh, fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno. We'll try this amp out and find out how much true power it puts out to a resistive load. If you haven't seen the test before on the left, RMS power output in watts. In the middle, you'll see the ohm load, on the right, you'll see the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have a remote indicator for calculating the efficiency. Four ohms, again, rated 330 watts at 14.4. If you have a single two ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in series, that gives you four ohm. Or if you have two four ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel, that will give you four ohm as well. Let's try the certified test first, up to 1% total harmonic distortion. 
Rated 330, we get 373. A little bit higher voltage there, 14.56. So at 14.4, we'll easily get that 330 watts. Let's try uncertified now up to the clipping point of the amplifier. And wow, it keeps going. 481, right at 14.44. Dynamic sends a pulse tone into the amp. 40 hertz here for subwoofers. A little bit less than the uncertified test, but we did get over 450 watts, 454 at 14.52. Now what about the efficiency? We measured 92% at four ohms, which is very good. Now let's move on to the two ohm test. Amplifier is rated 600 watts at 14.4 volts. This is equivalent to a four ohm Dual voice coil subwoofer wired in parallel gives you two ohms, or two two ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel also gives you two ohms. Certified test first to 1% total harmonic distortion, and we get 597, so right at 600 watts. That is so close. 597 at 14.4. Now let's reset the dyno here for the uncertified test, which takes us up to clipping. I bet we're gonna far surpass that 600 watts, and we do 685 at 14.32. Now let's try one last test here for the dynamic burst. Once again, oh, I was gonna say once again did less, but actually did more. Dynamic keeps going up. Voltage is strong, 14.54. We got 723 watts. And what about that efficiency at two ohms dropped significantly from 92% down to 72% at two ohms. Results are shown here, just show those tests. If you want to see the one ohm test, you have to stick around to the very end of the video. After the end credits, I will show a one ohm test. Now let's find out, do it bump dough using the Gately Audio Lorda Bass acrylic subwoofer with the blue LEDs, sick subwoofer. Let's fire it up, see how it sounds, watch it bump, Let's also watch the power output. Here we go. Let's try a little Basitronics Big Wizzy Bass of Halloween. Look at that flex. Let's try the woofer test. Here we go. Whoopsie, a little over excursion there, my bad. You big dummy. Time to find out what's inside. Let's take off the bottom panel, the four screws and find out what lies within this beast. Here we have the classic Alpine class D layout. Nothing too fancy going on here, but we will notice 2,700 microfarad, 63 volt. Rail caps are Nichicon, 105 degrees Celsius. Very nice, 25 volt, 2200 microfarad there for the input filtering. Also see lots of glue here to keep the capacitors as well as the transformer and the choke, keep those from vibrating. That is one of the biggest problems with amplifiers is having components vibrate and fall apart. IRFB 4321s here for the output. There's two of these. Let's unscrew the other two clamps here and find out what is for the power supply section. Get a close up on these IRF 3205s. Those who are technicians can tell you a whole lot more about these than I can. Let's move on to the pros and cons. Things that I like, 
things that I think that could be better, at least things to be aware of. First up, rated power plus, very compact size, fits under most vehicle seats, 24 dB per octave crossover, didn't mention that much, but it definitely cut out all the vocals. Insert terminals for speakers as well as power, ground, and remote. One Allen key to rule them all. Yes, use one size to fit them all. Has quality components, also an RCA output. Things to consider, has basic RCAs, no Tiffany, no subsonic filter. The bass knob costs extra. The bass boost is at 50 hertz. Single speaker output, if you want to use multiple subs, you're going to have to cram them all into that 8 gauge speaker connection. Not low budget. This is things 220 bucks. The burst sheet says 851 watts. What is up with that? We didn't get anywhere near that in our test. Let's show here what we got at two ohms. We got 597, 685, 723. So I went on the internet. I asked my friends, hey, you guys have any of these amps? A lot of people said 851 watts. <laughs> some of them said 871, some of them said 661, but... I guess Alpine just batches these up. I did ask Alpine to let me know what they did with these burst sheets to find out if they're like batched up per thousand amps or something, or if this is just an issue, I don't know. So once I find out, I will leave an update in the comment section below, let you guys know about that. But don't let it deter you from this great amp. I really liked it, very small, Alpine quality. It's gonna last for a while. Thanks as always for watching. Appreciate you guys. Till next time, this is Big D, I'm out of here. The OG, stick around for the extras, and just for you, we have the one ohm test. Roll that beautiful bean footage. This Alpine A60M is a two ohm rated amp. We are gonna try one ohm here on the dyno. Don't try this at home. Uh, go with their recommended ohm loads, but I am gonna try this just for you guys. See what we get, if it goes into protect, if it blows the fuse, what happens? Here we go. Okay, it was, um, not counting clean, kind of cycling in and out. As you can see, we pulled 82.5 amps of current. We only have 60 amps of fusing. Sometimes you guys, guys ask how that's possible. It's because the fuses do not blow instantly, so they can run that extra current uh, for approximately a second or so before they pop. So there you go. 40 hertz, uncertified to clipping at one ohm. All right, did you guys notice that? So it stopped around 600 and some watts and then it jumped to 1155. It's because it went into protect and then it came out. So this is not really a legitimate uncertified number. So um, yeah, we'll definitely put a big asterisk beside that and say that it went into protect. Let's try one ohm dynamic burst on this Alpine A60M. It is not rated for one ohm load, so it may go into protect. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. Let's try it. One thousand sixty-five watts at fourteen point five six. You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. Hustle, hustle, never